Hello and welcome back to the farm. As you recall, about six weeks ago, I bought a bulldozer and it got dropped off. In the few hours that I had it, I played around at the farm, I started clearing some areas, and boy did I learn that if you run that bulldozer into things, it'll knock them down. I made pretty good progress, but boy oh boy there was a lot to go, I had a lot to clear. So this property is unique. As you recall from previous videos, it's about 22 and a half acres, and part of that acreage is kind of a swampy area. It's called the 100-year floodplain. There is water on the property. There is an area that is designated New York State wetlands, and there's also another area designated federal wetlands. So everything that I clear has to be away from those wetland areas which is designated by the areas where there were fence posts that I've discovered as I've been clearing the area. Now remember, my goal is to add in a road that was already cut in and a driveway. And the area that's going to be a field has always been a field. And that's the area that I'm clearing currently and will continue to clear. And eventually I will designate that area with fence posts as the planting field. Well, I can't say that progress with the farm or progress with this bulldozer has been fast. My life is sort of busy. Work is busy. I'm still traveling for work. So there's only so much time during the week that I could dedicate to going up to the farm, clearing stuff out, and making progress. But I'm doing it. So over the past maybe four weeks, there were a couple weekends where I was able to spend maybe three, four hours per day over the course of several weekends clearing the majority of the field area in the front of this property. Now you may think to yourself, come on, you got a gigantic bulldozer, that thing can plow trees and shrubs and brush over in no time. And yes, that is largely the case, but keep in mind here, I'm not out to dig trenches or holes, I'm just here to scrape the vegetative layer off the surface of this field. And that is incredibly difficult. This bulldozer is very big, it's very heavy, and as cumbersome as it may seem, those controls are very sensitive. If you push that blade down just an eighth of an inch too far, you're digging yourself a hole. So trying to feather that blade height, in addition to adjusting the forward and backward speed to either scrape forward or back blade the land, it takes a lot of time to clear some area. I will say though, compared to literally any other way of clearing ground, this thing is rapid. Clearing the area alongside these buildings, this is really tricky. The bulldozer is fairly smooth, but if it digs in or if it gets hung up in any way, and you're really close to a building, it does have a tendency to jump in the direction that it's getting caught up. So there were times when I was very close to the remnants of this building shell on the right hand side, and even in between that building and that little shed toward the bottom of the screen that I kind of 
popped the bulldozer into the wood and it just punched straight through the side of the wood. Same thing with the garage over here. There was a stump very close to the garage and I hit the stump and instead of the stump going over, it kind of pushed the bulldozer into the garage and yeah, I did knock about a two foot hole into the side of the garage. But that's okay because this garage is gonna get reskinned, fixed up, and everything will be good. From the very first time that I drove by this property, the one glaring thing that was missing on this farm was a driveway. For the entire first, I don't know, almost nine months that I've owned this property, I've only ever been able to park on the road. And the road is very, very busy, and there's a very tight shoulder. So on one of the days that I was at the farm, I spent probably a little too much time clearing out an area that I had designated as the driveway. You've seen this in previous videos, you've seen it in the diagrams. The driveway is going to go from the road down along the side of this building, around the garage, and then back behind the barn. So I did clear the area, at least to the side of the buildings, enough to get my vehicles off the road. And I gotta say, it came really good. The main way that I was able to get this driveway so flat was by backblading, that is dropping the blade at the road and pulling backwards back through the property. And it is exactly at street level. So I think this turned out really nice. The ground is all compressed and it's good to go. This area behind the barn and between the buildings has always been a little bit annoying for me. The grass grows really long, there's a lot of overgrowth, and that overgrowth makes it impossible to get into the lower level of the barn or any of these little outbuildings. There's stuff growing in front of all the doorways. So I was very eager to spend some time on one of the days that I was bulldozing at the farm to try and clear out this center area. Now there's a lot of junk shrubbery in here and it goes directly up against the barn so I had to be super careful and pull that bulldozer so that its blade was basically touching the concrete foundation outside the lower level of the barn drop it and then pull backwards and it worked I was able to pull out all of that junk shrubbery 
all of the grass overgrowth and what I found out was that directly behind the barn there's actually a concrete pad. I don't think it's a very thick concrete pad because going over it several times I did crack it into several chunks but I didn't realize that a large area of this back portion of the barn is actually concrete. You could kind of see it as I'm dragging backwards away from the barn in several of these angles. It extends out probably 25 feet from the barn and uh, it's there. So hopefully now that it's scraped down to concrete and there's just a layer of dirt over it, I won't get any of this crazy overgrowth again and I'll be able to more easily manage this particular area which will allow me to get into some of these buildings and start clearing some of that stuff out. probably tell by looking at some of these video shots that the sumac grows absolutely insane in this area of both the country and our city. Some of this sumac has grown taller than the barn, so you know 50-75 feet tall, and there's certain times of year that you're supposed to stay away from it, and there's certain times of year that is better to handle it and uh, you know manage it cut it down get it out of here and the heat of summer is not the time to be touching or handling any of this it's super irritant to skin eyes nose uh, you know so on and so forth but uh, it just seems like a good time to do this with the bulldozer I would very much like to pick all of this up and put it out by the road so that the uh, town can come and take care of it I just don't want to touch any of this right now. In fact, at one point, I had used my winch to pull over a gigantic grove of sumac, and the winch cable tightened so hard around the 6-inch, 8-inch, 10-inch thick stems of the sumac that I couldn't get it off, and I really didn't want to touch it. So I had to pull out the chainsaw, chainsaw the sumac trunks, and then uh, you know, kind of untie the rest of the winch cable from there trying not to get any of that sap on my skin. Uh, I really can't wait until all the sumac that has grown around this property is clear. And really the only sumac that is on this property is the sumac that has grown in the areas that were at one point cleared, such as the fields or the sides of the buildings, that have in the last 20 years or so uh, grown over wild, which is all the stuff that I'm cutting down now. All in all, the past number of weeks have been very productive at the farm. Now if you look at a lot of these piles and trees and just junk everywhere in the field, uh, it may look like a daunting task, and, and it absolutely is. I need to get all that cleaned. But in just a few short weeks, and probably no more than 10 to 12 hours of actual work on the bulldozer, I've cleared 99% of this field. There are a few areas that I had cleared uh, that I didn't show in this video that I'll show in an upcoming video, such as the old farmer's path that leads to the back of the pond, and also that road that's cut in on the side of the property that leads to the cleared five acres where they were going to put the solar array. But beyond that, most of the field is stripped of the trees and the debris 
that at one point had covered every square inch. There are no more six or eight foot tall pricker bushes. Everything is down. At this point, I simply need to clean up some of the logs, some of the, the limbs that have been cut down, and there are still some trees that do need to come down. We are gonna have to wait till the fall. Steve will come back, he'll help me, and we'll do more videos about the remainder of the trees coming down. But until then, I'm going to come back out to the farm, touch things up a little bit here and there, and get ready for the next big project, which is finishing the driveway area and this back area behind the barns. So until then, thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next video.